Welcome back to my channel, my name is Evelina and in today's video I'm going to tell you all about Polish dishes and Polish food. So whether you are traveling to Poland or maybe you are already in Poland or maybe you live somewhere where they have Polish festival and you would like to go and try some of the foods but you have no idea what any of these dishes mean, I am here to explain it to you. And if you have never tried Polish food, I highly encourage you to go and find authentic, traditional, homemade Polish restaurant or Polish place where you can just go, maybe Polish trucks, sometimes they have like food trucks, um, or find like a festival, there's Polish festivals everywhere where they serve Polish food. You gotta go, you gotta try it, stuff your face with it because it's so amazing and so delicious. And if you're in Poland right now and eating pączki and gołąbki and pierogi i polskie desery i lody, I'm so jealous. Okay, so I'm going to start with the dish number one, and that is pierogi. And I feel like a lot of people already know what pierogi are, or maybe have heard somewhere or something about it. But if you don't, pierogi are dumplings. <laughs> they are dumplings stuffed with some kind of filling. So a lot of times in Poland, you have meat pierogi, sauerkraut pierogi, mushroom pierogi, or potato and cheese pierogi, which are very, very popular in Poland. So if you ever see potato and cheese pierogi, a lot of the times they're gonna be called ruskia. Pierogi ruskia. So if you see pierogi ruskia on the menu, you'll know that it is potato and cheese. They are delicious, but all of them are really good. The meat ones are really good. The sauerkraut, the mushrooms are so amazing. You just have to try them. Try them all if you can. Um, and a lot of the times we serve them with grilled onion and bacon on top. Um, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much how they serve them or how we serve them. Um, if you don't eat meat, you don't need to get bacon. Grilled onion is just perfect enough as well. So another Polish very famous dish is Gołąbki. 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 And gołąbki are stuffed cabbage. So it's a stuffed cabbage with seasoned rice and meat. A lot of the times it's like a mixture of ground meat and it's just all mixed in with rice and seasoned to perfection. And it's really, really good. Also, we serve it with tomato sauce. So you pour tomato sauce all over it and it's just delicious. It's really good. So next Polish dish is called bigos. Bigos. And a lot of the times they translate it as hunter stew. So it's pretty much a stew. So it's got few kinds of meat. A lot of times it's pork and sausage, polska kielbasa, Polish sausage, and it's a sauerkraut and fresh cabbage. All of it is all mixed together, seasoned to perfection. We are all about seasonings. And I think, I don't know, that's just what makes the dish so delicious because it's all seasoned so well. Um, and it's not too salty. It's just so flavorful. Excuse me, because I'm like, <sighs> thinking about it, so I'm getting hungry. Yeah, so bigos is pretty much all kinds of meat with fresh cabbage and sauerkraut cooked and seasoned to perfection, and it's delish. So there is a couple of very famous soups in Poland, which you might see it on the menu. The first one is rosu. Rosu. Ro. Su. Rosu. And it's pretty much chicken broth, it's very liquidy, so we don't really have many of the soups that are very thick, at least in the United States, there's a lot of thick, saucy soups. In Poland, we have more liquidy soups that are more brothy. Um, so this is like a chicken broth, and it's got noodles in them, and a little bit of vegetables, not even that much. It's like, a, it's like when you are sick, you would eat the chicken soup because it's just flavorful and it's delicious. And fun fact, back in a day when I used to live in Poland, rosu was only served on Sundays because it was a delicacy. Delicacy? Delicacy. Delicacy? It was pretty much, it was, it's, we couldn't afford 
it to have it every single day so it was just served on a Sunday. After we came back from the church on Sundays we would sit down to the table and eat rosso. Another very famous soup and delicious is borscht and you might have heard of it of it, um, it's a beet soup. And everybody makes it differently and you can have a beet broth, which we serve in the Christmas time. And it's almost like you have the beet broth with dumplings in them, almost like pierogi, but tiny little one. They might be called ushka. And ushka, <laughs> ucho, ushka means little ears, little ears, and they kind of look like little ears. So you might see barscht z ushkami, that's pretty much very flavorful, se seasoned um, beet broth with, with little dumplings, like little pierogies. They're very little pierogies, but they're called ushka. But if we would make barscht at the house, it's called barscht, barscht, and it's pretty much a beet soup, but it's got a ton of vegetable in it as well. You put potatoes in it and just whatever you pretty much have in your fridge, ton of vegetables. It's really good and really good for you. A couple of desserts that you absolutely must try when in Poland are the first one, first and foremost, are pączki. Pączki. Pączki are Polish donuts, and I feel like nothing can beat Polish donuts. They're just so delicious. I think they make them with yeast rising, which I feel like nobody does that anymore. But in Poland, they always do that. They make them rise, and then they uh, fry them, and then there's always a little bit marmalade inside. They're huge. They're like this big. And they're so good. And I know there's so many different kinds now, but back in the day, we usually had like one kind, which was just like one regular ponczek with, with like marmalade inside. And that was pretty much it. And that's how I remember them. And I always remember their taste. They're just soft and so flavorful and so delicious. And I can't wait. I don't think I've ever had a donut here that tasted as good as a Polish donut. And to have a Polish donut, like you have to go to Poland and get a Polish donut from a Polish place in a Polish store, Polish bakery. <laughs> so another thing that we really, really like to make, and we would actually make that at home a lot, are crepes, Polish crepes. And in Polish, you call them naleśniki. 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 They are pretty much Polish crepes and we filled them in with jam, jelly, or sweet cheese. So I can't really explain what that would be. It's almost like um, it's like a cheese, like a certain cheese. It's called farug. If you are living in Poland, you know what I'm talking about. But if you are living in the United States like I do, I don't know what I would compare this to. Maybe like a cream cheese. Maybe it'll be like a cream cheese, but you add sugar to it and you mix it all in and then you spread it on your um, crepe and then you roll it and you have a sweet cream cheese. Yeah, I think it will be like a sweet cream cheese crepe. They were really good. Um, the jam ones were really good. Also, we would stuff it with mushrooms and onion, which are delicious. Um, so I don't know how they do it now anymore because I'm sure there's so, so many more than I know of. But back in the day, those were like the most popular crepes, naleśniki. And, um, and I highly encourage you to try it because they're just delicious. Nowadays, here in the United States, I really like the naleśniki crepes with Nutella, strawberries, bananas. Those are so good. Um, but back in the day in Poland, we never made them this way. So maybe they do them like that today. I have no idea. But um, back in the day, that wasn't the case. Also, if you see name Sernik, Sernik, 
that's a pretty much a Polish cheesecake. I feel like Polish cheesecake is made a little bit different than they are made here. My mom always says that nothing can compare to Polish cheesecake and any cheesecake she's tried here, she said it's not the same, it's not the same, you gotta try it. You gotta try just Polish cheesecake. They taste a little bit different, I think, which of course they taste different everywhere you go, but um, yeah, you gotta try Polish cheesecake because it tastes a little bit different and it's made, I think, a little bit different that we make them here, like in the United States. And lastly, last dessert of the day is jabłecznik. 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 So it's a pretty much apple pie. Again. The way they make them here, it's completely different than the way I remember eating them and tasting them in Poland. It was completely different. They're way too sweeter here and the apples are just different. I think in Poland we have delicious apples and the way they make them with like that cake, it's more like a apple cake and it's like sprinkled with powder sugar on top and it's delicious. So if you are somewhere when you can try jabłecznik, Go ahead and try it. It's a very different kind of apple pie. It's All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this kind of video. I know it's a little bit different. And if you enjoy this kind of video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you would like to follow me on all my social media, all the links are down in the description box. I also have a podcast on iTunes. The, all the links are down there. Um, I only have one episode, but another episode is coming up. So also I have ton of other Polish videos, that, so check them out. I'll link them all down here or somewhere over here. And thank you again for always hanging out with me and uh, I will see you guys very soon. Dziękuję bardzo i do zobaczenia wkrótce. Cześć!